If you've ever wondered whether your CBD is working, that means it probably wasn't. Next Evo Naturals develops smart sorb technology, clinically proven to help your body absorb CBD four times more better than regular CBD oil. Because oil doesn't just mix with your water-based body. It works fast too. So when you're trying to get sleep, you won't waste time wondering, is it working? I started using the Next Evo as soon as um, I got it, the Next Evo Naturals. They are so amazing. I tend to have a very um, busy life. So sometimes it takes me a while to unwind. And with the Next Evo, I'm able to take it. And for me, I it helps to calm me. It helps to let me fall to sleep very smoothly. So I highly recommend it, especially if you've been thinking about trying CBD. Um, now, I definitely think some of the things that you might want to be able to know about this is that with the smart sorb technology, it improves the ability for the CBD to be absorbed, getting into your system as little as 10 minutes. Most CBD oils found in tinctures, gummies, and capsules achieve between 2 to 10% abs absorption, which means more than 90% of what you think you're getting is actually wasted. And... Next Evo Naturals are scientifically formulated to deliver more CBD in a way your body can actually use. And it's fast, proven 20, 29 times better absorption in the first 30 minutes. And their triple action CBD sleep helps you get more refreshing sleep naturally. All right. So it can help calm your mind. And then it has fast acting melatonin to help you sleep fast, plus control release melatonin so you can sleep longer and awake refresh. It's the only by brand that combines the uh, y'all know the word. There's proprietary ingredients in one product. <laughs> and they have delicious strawberry flavored sleep support CBD complex gummies to help you fall asleep quickly. Get a better night's rest and a better day tomorrow with products from Next Evo Naturals. For up to 25% off subscription orders for $40 or more, use promo code SK. SK. NextEvos.com. That's N E X T E V O.com. Promo code SK. SK. And with that, five, four, three, two. What up, y'all? Welcome. Here's the thing. I'm Kevin on stage. She's Patrick Angel. Welcome to the podcast episode. Smash that like button. Smash that notification button. Bangers, bangers, bangers. All 20 Bangers, bangers, bangers. Yes, sir. What happened? The baby woke up. Oh, mama, we sorry, baby papa. He's so, papa, he's mama. Sick. He's so um, sick. Um, before we begin, church announcements, real quick. Columbus, Ohio. There's less than a hundred tickets at the time of this recording to the Friday and Saturday early show. At mm -hmm. this case, those shows will be sold out. Okay, don't wait till the show is over. By now, you know in the end we are gonna win. Burbank next week is already sold out. In Ontario, uh, California, that Saturday show is close to sold out already. So hit KevOnStage.com for tickets to your show. And also, one more announcement. Our very good friend, our illustrious, unruly cousin, it has been announced to the world. We all are witnesses to the greatness that is Angel Lakita Moore, Tanksley, the actress. Today we are focusing on the actress because she has been cast in season four of a black lady sketch show. Round of applause. Emojis in the chat. Even if you're not watching this live, show some support for our good friend who is on the home box office channel. Come that on. will be on premium. Come My on. friend is her gas ain't no 89, no 87. Her gas 91, whatever the highest gas price. Is, you got to go down to the third. Say, who getting that kind of premium? <laughs> Angel is. She put premium gas because she's on premium programming. She's gonna be on HBO to the max, not HBO to the regular. That's going to be HBO Mad. I mean, going to be on HBO regular, but you know what I'm talking about. I'm keeping the analogy going. Angel, congratulations. <laughs> congratulations. <laughs> tell us everything you can tell us. 
You know, I can't tell you much, but I can tell you I'm super excited. Listen, what I know without a shadow of a doubt, man, th this is what I know, is that there are a lot of talented Black women that are comedic. And so I do not see this as a small feat at all that I was chosen to be one of the three new members of the cast. Um, because listen, I mean, Black women be out here and they be really, 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 really talented. So I am super duper blessed, super duper honored. I think what Black Lady Sketch Show has created over the past three seasons has been something unlike we've ever seen before. So I'm excited to just <laughs> carry the torch and be a part of this coming up season. So yeah, I'm excited. I'm so glad that we that uh, it was announced. Obviously, I will not be sharing anything <laughs> outside of that. Um, but no, I'm super duper. I'm super duper pumped. And I was so excited when we were announced yesterday because I hadn't even shared it with the Angel Wings. I hadn't said nothing. I said, I'm not saying a darn thing because I'm going to shut up. So yeah. yeah. So hopefully you'll support it and uh, you'll watch the season. And, uh, you know, watch previous seasons, too, if you haven't watched it. So, yeah. I'm excited. It. I'm going to get me a new HBO account. I already <laughs> pay. I'm going to, I want HBO to think that they got a new person. They said, who doesn't buy new? I'm going to, and I'm going to watch it from both accounts. I'm going to, I'm going to do like the record labels and play them both like a, like a streaming factory. I'm going to watch it <laughs> on my phone and my laptop. And we listen, listen, and I'm not going, I'm, I'm not even exaggerating. Black Lady Sketch Show alumni. Quinta Brunson, network television, her own show. Okay. Mm -hmm. Ashley Nicole Black, she writing on Ted Lasso. She got another of her own show, right? We pray and we thank big God. We is hoping that <laughs> angel shines so bright that this <laughs> elevates her. We are so godly proud of her. Y'all just, y'all, we just as a family, as a stage crew, supporters near and far. We is just so we can't be regular proud of you. That ain't say we got to be godly proud of Come you. Come on, godly proud. Godly proud of you. Because listen, if y'all don't know, and I'm gonna brag on my friend because she ain't gonna brag on herself. <laughs> it had to been thousands of <laughs> talented black women who had auditioned for that show. Every black comedic actress who trying to get their foot in the door good. <laughs> Saw that audition, and I know they bought their very best. I ain't tell you this, Angel. Somebody, somebody we know. I I had posted your story that you made it, and and she commented. She said she auditioned, right? And when she came out, she was like, "Oh, cool. Well, hey, it was a good trip down to L.A. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God." Uh, so, oh no, so she's coming in. Oh, cool. So, oh, y'all called everybody. I thought just like some people got the call. <laughs> Her, oh no, for sure. That's why y'all didn't y'all didn't hit me. She said she went back, and she don't even live in LA. She said she was gonna come in LA if she booked it. She said she just went on back home, knowing she did her best. And she <laughs> listen, she it was right in another day. <laughs> I was shocked. I the, truly, with any audition now that I'm is in my big age, I just be like, I'm gonna give y'all best I got. If y'all choose me, y'all do. If y'all don't, y'all don't. And that's exactly the same way I went into this. And I have loved this show since. The first episode, for real, for real. I what I just feel like what Robin has created is something really magical. But uh, I knew. Listen, there's a lot of us, and the cast is small. The cast is usually like only four people. So four I was like, four people. <laughs> I was like, I, you know, I don't know where I'll fit in if I can't fit in. But if you want me, I please take me. So yeah. So this is also thank you guys for understanding, especially the people who watch this show. H, here's the thing live. Of come on, because <laughs> I got mantled, didn't I? Wait for the angel. If you didn't get mantled, you wouldn't have got in. I was mantled. Yes, I was. I was mantled. Uh, <laughs> but for those of you all who watch, here's the thing live. Thank you all for understanding the hecticness of the schedule because I now. Be I now have to sometimes be gone to shoot. And of course, Kevin is always busy and Josh is always busy as well. But we and still he's get always so handsome with his widow mo. He is. He's <laughs> such a golf influencer now. I love him. But um, yeah, for real though. Uh, I'm super excited. I'm so blessed. I'm so happy. You know, God just be like, okay, girl, come on. Listen, I I am just I'm 
Y'all, if y'all don't know about me, I, and this is even prior to Angel, I have never been jealous of people I admire getting what's coming to them. I live in a world where I believe God's blessings are abundant and what my friends, I couldn't have booked that show no way. <laughs> right, 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 right. Well, it's right. a Black Lady black, sketch show. Black Lady sketch show. No, I, that's the show that I, got. I actually got my first residual check for that show the other day. And I said, I done forgot they pay you more than once on this. <laughs> so this you, was, that your, was that your first TV role? That was my first angel. I had to pay my. That's I lost money on that because I was yeah. sag eligible. And I didn't know. Yeah, and you I had to pay to my, you my credit was. They said, "Hey, before you book this, you got to pay this." I said, "Who is sag? I don't never met no sag." Who sag after it? I don't know her. I said, "Oh, y'all want this?" But I said, "What they give me more than what I I lose one. I lose it." But I was just so happy to be there. It didn't matter, and I totally forgot. I've never got a royalty check. But anyway, that's not the point I was making. The point I was making is it does my heart glad to Thank see you. people because I know, Angel, I wanted to say this too. I didn't want to interrupt you. I'm really working on that. So y'all y'all pray with me because it's hard. Don't worry about it, Kevin. We love you however you come. No, but I got to be better for my own self. And I just like to hear my voice so much. I want to hear even when other people are talking. <laughs> but your audition and my audition is so different. You go and audition, you get the best that you have and you let the chips fall where they may. I go audition. I give the best that I have, which isn't good as now I know when we practice, I could do some more things. But when I don't get it, everyone is on my list. They will all play. I know. I know. I, you didn't pick me. Who, I don't, who else was there? Somebody better? Now now you will pay. So, it's, your, it's your Michael Jordan. It's my Michael Jordan. I have Aria's list. Tywin mm -hmm. Lannister, Cersei Lannister, Ellen Payne, all them times, all them people who, who didn't book me. But no, I can't wait. Whenever that show airs, I imagine probably if they're announcing it now, I would say spring, summer, se September, spring, summer. Yeah, <laughs> that was about that? September, spring, spring, summer, somewhere but around there. that trailer comes and says that uh, that show, I'm going to watch that show live. I'm not even going to DVR it. We should have a little watch party, Angel. I plan on it. I plan on doing a, a watch Invite party. Me. Invite me. Stage crew, y'all could do a watch party too. I'm doing yes. one with, I'm definitely doing one with the Angel Burns, but yeah, I'm gonna do one. I, you think I'm not gonna act a fool? Angel, I'm a fool regular. I'm gonna have a red carpet to your house. Make a you red know carpet. That's happening, carpet. Kevin. Yes, <laughs> there will be a red carpet to the back. Lights M making my neighbors mad because lights are gonna be <laughs> doing all that on the carpet. I'm gonna hire Jeffrey to pretend to be paparazzi taking pictures. <laughs> low. Yes, stop it. Step and repeat. This is fantastic. I'm honestly, it's a win for us. It's a, it's a, it's a win for the people and us. I mean, people who believe in you and support you. Uh, when you win, we be like, I knew I was, I was, I was betting on the right people, and it's just good. We know your talent, but for like when you audition for that, and then we gonna go into the show. But we this deserved its own segment. When you book that, it's not just. Like one person that has to like you, right? Robin has to like you, right? The showrunners, producers, you got to get network approval because they invest a lot of money in that show. When I was on set that uh, that time I shot that sketch, mm -hmm. it was the most trailers I've ever seen in my life. There was trailers. They had rented out the mall, like the bottom uh, section of the, the bottom uh level uh floor of the mall's parking garage right mm -hmm. trailers everywhere they and listen let me tell you they had three kinds of meat for the lunch that's how you, steak chicken fit and <laughs> vegan and vegan when we did churchy you ate chicken on chicken day <laughs> <laughs> oh you ate the vegan thing on steak day you ate steak or you ate the big production get go they go three meats Right when I I said I said I can get fish and chicken, they say yeah, on the same. I know I'm only here today, so I know they was real. Uh, mm -hmm. My trailer had my name on it, had my clothes, and there was press. I said, "Ooh, y'all know me." They had drawers for me. I said, "I got my own." They had socks. I said, "I got my own." <laughs> they said, "Just in case." Yeah, just, just in case. I said, "Well, this is warm." But anyway, <laughs> we was we just so happy for it. We can't wait to see it, and we just hope you continue on this show or book other things and we just can watch you on television all right with that said let's do the ad and then we'll get to the show show have you ever wished you could bring a whole family together no matter where they are even if they've never been together before 
Well, with Paint Your Life, you can. Paint Your Life will create a portrait with anyone you want together. Get a professional hand-painted portrait created from any photo at a truly affordable price or combine photos of people and places you love into one painting. Choose from a team of world-class artists and work with them until every detail is perfect. The user-friendly platform makes it easy to order a custom-made hand-painted portrait in less than five minutes. It's fast and you can receive your portrait in less than two weeks. I personally am about to use this to create a Christmas gift. I know Kevin has used it before with his family. He actually has a couple of Paint Your Life uh, uh, portraits. Correct, Kevin? Correct. Correct. And the quality is truly mind blowing. I do think a lot of times when we get into this place of like it's about to be gift giving season and we are trying to come up with more meaningful gifts and not so materialistic. This is the perfect place to start because it's going to be a meaningful personal gift that can be cherished forever. And it's perfect for birthdays, anniversaries, even a wedding gift. If, if you're not somebody that celebrates Christmas, there's all these other occasions that you can give such a beautiful gift. But if you are doing it for holidays, make sure you order your holiday gift right away so you don't have to worry about the shipping delays. So here's the offer for you guys. At paintyourlife.com, there's no risk. If you don't love the final painting, your money is refunded, guaranteed. And right now, as a limited offer, get 20% off your painting. That's right, 20% off and free shipping. To get the special offer, text the word SK, SK. to 87204. That's SK. SK. To 87204. I'm going to tell you that one more time. Text SK, SK to 87204. Paint your life. Celebrate the moments that matter most. Message and data rates apply, may apply. Terms apply. Available at paintyourlife.com slash terms. Again, terms. That's, again, that's text SK to 87204. All right. So first on the docket, and Josh, you can title the episode, No Mo Code Switching. Okay. No mo code switching. All right. Deion Sanders recently took over Jackson State University, which is a uh, HBCU in Mississippi, Jackson State uh, or Jackson, Mississippi. And uh, I'm a big fan of Deion. I love Deion. Just saying that. Um, he had this interesting clip go viral. Uh, and I just I don't want to frame it. I want y'all to watch it without framing. And we'll talk about it after. Now is Jackson State head football coach, Coach Prime. Coach, how you feeling today? No, straight up. I was asked how you feeling. I was not talking like that just two minutes ago. I can you do the interview? Can you come in like you normally sound? I just want to be clear and concise. And professional? Yes, sir. So being you is not professional. Well, I mean, I can't say, hey, what's up, Cole? I can't do that. I ain't actually do that. I just want you to be you. Okay. Yes, sir. All right. Let me start over. Right. All right. Joining me is Jackson State Coach Coach Prime. Is that the, is that the same? Dog, it's the same. Like, just be you. Just try your best to be you. Okay. All right. I, I thought I was doing that. But anyway, um, I want to just ask you, you feeling okay? See, like, if I say, man, what's up, Rob J? That's me. What's up, bro, Jay? You, you know the difference? You, did you see the difference? Uh, That's what you do. <laughs> and I don't know who you're trying to please out there, but just I just want you to try your best to be you. Okay. All right. How you feeling today? Much better. I now, everybody's saying in the comments that the full clip, which that isn't, gives a better story to obviously always a full clip is a better story but we're not going to do that and here's the thing we're going to make judgments based off of the snippet that we're going to watch <laughs> we're going to do the way the internet does baby whatever i see is it there no world exists outside of what we i already are know. solely here to spectate yeah <laughs> baby perceive speculations and allegations this ain't got nothing to do with me. Two days from now, I'm gonna forget we talked about this podcast. Baby. As soon as I say bye, it's over. I don't remember. <laughs> what did I say? Huh? <laughs> Sorry, Kevin, but we're gonna say go ahead. Uh, I so I didn't know they played together like that, and I'll I'll be honest, right? I didn't see a problem with this at first because I just thought I like Dion I think he's funny 
And what I thought he was doing was saying here at Jackson State, at HBCU, you ain't got to do that, right? Mm -hmm. It ain't like Dion is coaching at a Power 5 school. He's at, you know, uh, USC where, you know, uh, white people everywhere you got to put on for them. It seemed like he was like, this us, right? This us. You ain't got to do it with me. You ain't got to do it at Jackson State, not for this football team where I'm the head coach of the football program, right? You ain't got to do all that. Just talk regularly. It was so funny when the dude was like, what's up, Coach? What's going on? I would love an interview where the person <laughs> just talked like that. I want regular news anchors. There's a there's a TikTok anchor. I want to say her name is something Reyes. But her and her husband are both uh, uh, anchors. And they do anchor voice and regular life stuff, uh -huh. right? It is very funny to me. Josh had to go be cute somewhere. Oh, it is did. very funny to me, right? So um, I thought that he was he was saying that if they're playing, right, then it's fun. But what is interesting? Let's, for the sake of argument, let's say they're not playing, right? And let's say. Dion's being for real, right? Where people are saying they're not, they're they're not playing. I mean, they are playing, but let's say they aren't. Mm -hmm. Is it okay for someone to say you ain't got to code switch around me on on an interview like that? Is it okay to be like, hey man, we good, we we friends? And if it is okay, is it okay to say it on camera? It's never okay to say it on camera. If we, if no, <laughs> no, say it to me off camera. Say it to me after the view. Next time you interview me, don't, uh, no, don't. <laughs> even, even like, okay, I've only, I've hosted a red carpet multiple times. I've never had to do like that type of like sit down interview. Oh, yeah. Lord, how are you doing? Blah, blah, blah. But when I think about like working on set, when I'm getting corrections, the director doesn't yell the correction in front of everybody. The director comes, really? whispers it into my ear, checks to make sure I get what she's saying, and then we move on, right? Mm -hmm. There's, there isn't a lot of like outwardly correction that happens just to help the person save face. Yeah. Um, so I would be like, one... It might be that man's preference. May, for instance, if somebody is like, "No, I code switch because it keeps me, um, it keeps me like completely engaged because I'm having to have this voice, and it keeps me actually caring about what you're going to say." Because I know the one reason why I hated doing interviews is that I don't care a lot of times about the thing that I'm asking, mm. so I have to like, <laughs> I have to be extra in order to like actually listening what the person is saying to me and having mm -hmm. a response back. Because a lot of times on the red carpet, I don't care about what you say. So <laughs> what did you feel <laughs> when you did this project? I don't care. I really don't. So for me, I had to be a little bit extra. So for him, it could have been, he thought this is the way, like he said, to sound professional. This is the way for me to sound more articulate. So I don't know. I just don't think there's a time and place to correct a person to that extent, but I know they friends, whatever. But I'm just saying, in the uh context that we're talking about, heck no. Right, right. My uh, my uh, greatest. How do I say this? My, my greatest joy about working with all deaf was not having the code switch, right? Because we were the, the black folks, and because of the boss, the boss was the boss we were allowed to talk as we talk regular life. And when mm -hmm. I tell you it was so free, it was so freeing to say, nigga, shut up in a meeting, say nigga. <laughs> and white people would be like, okay, it was so, right. I remember it was so wild to read people email with white people on there. Nigga, and I'm, I'm not even saying this was professional, nor should that have happened. Josh had an appointment. He'll be back for the bonus episode. That's why he popped off. We had technical difficulties. That's why we were late. Um, and by the time we switched thing, Josh had to go. He was, he was, he was predisposed. But uh, um, yeah, I think I would love to live in a world 
where you don't have to. I mean, at Kevin Stage Studios, although although our company is is kind of small, we don't have to code switch in meetings or phone calls. I, I I've been I've been pitching some TV shows uh, this week, and by the grace of God, I've been pitching to people who are black. And I'm not saying nigga in these meetings, but I'm not having to code switch and be giving giving like uh, cultural references that people get in a pitch automatically makes me feel like my pitch is going better, right? Yeah. In the past, I usually, especially prior to the pandemic, and I can't say after the pandemic, I've noticed, at least in my pitches, there's more people who look like me in the pitches than there used to be. Used to be me and four white faces mm-hmm. you know, and mostly white males that I'm pitching to. And I, I didn't like code switch in the sense of like when I worked at Boeing or at the bank where I would like code switch. But I couldn't, I couldn't speak freely because of, I couldn't get, I, so I'll give you an example. In, in one of the pitches that I've been pitching, there's a reference that I make to Dylon, 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 mm-hmm. right? And in the three pitches we did this week and last week, there's been three or four people on there. In only one pitch, there was a white dude and the rest of them were black people, men and women. He was the only person who didn't get that reference when I made it. Everybody else laughed. Dogs be farting. Yeah, and they stink when they fart. Like, worse yeah. than humans. Like, their food be rotten, rotten when, like, in their body. Jesus. Mm-hmm. It'd be like, oh, you're dying. That's what it'd be yeah, smelling. Are you okay? That's a regular dog fart. Good grief. Mm-hmm. Are you, don't come over here. You is... Man, that was I bet you that ended up in your mouth because you were talking. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway, the point I was making is uh, they got the reference and they yeah. clicked in their head. They knew what I was. I didn't have to say making the band. I didn't have to say Diddy. They knew what I was talking about when I made that reference. And that made me feel easier. This is why I believe it is harder to pitch to people who don't look like you, think like you, and or have had your lived experiences. This is why I used to make this um, analogy all the time. Jimmy Tatro, and this is nothing against him because it wasn't him that said it. Jimmy Tatro is a white dude. He made a lot of frat humor at the time. And uh, Dormtainment was black dudes. They were making uh, frat humor. They're doing, uh, not frat humor, but like college, black college college stuff. And I remember we were talking to a brand and they were saying, well, we like Jimmy Tatro. He's brand safe. And, you know, Dormtainment's not really brand safe. And I was like, brand safe. They are making the same videos. But if you didn't go to Clark Atlanta, Morehouse, you know what I'm saying? The AUC in Atlanta, and you were, you pledged, I don't know any white fraternity uh, symbols, tri-delts. Yeah, Sigma you go. They be, having, right. they be using different parts of the Greek letter. But if you went to Sigma Nu and he make a comment and he says Sigma Nu, you're like, oh, I, I pledge Sigma Nu. And I'm like, Sigma is a different fraternity when I <laughs> <laughs> like, what are you, what are you done now? Try Delts in UW. There was a, a sorority called uh, Delta, Delta, Delta. Try yeah. Delta. Yeah, Delta, Delta. How can I help you? How can I help you? The Deltas that I know is different. They is black. They like red, and they like elephants. Okay, um, but that is just a different lived experience. So it's easier to relate to something you live. That's why I always say like Hollywood is racist for sure, but a bigger problem is nepotism. And relatability it's yeah. easier to do a nuance nuanced like comedy of a white person because a white person's usually approving that show yeah so they know what you're talking about right mm-hmm. uh animal house that college movie that is a very different movie than stomp the yard and they both are happening at colleges you could have had stomp the yard at a black college like just the black people um or uh the black people in a white college matter of fact i would say my college experience at University of Washington is entirely different than the white people and the Asian people. Same. Of Washington. Same. My college experience would have been totally different had I went to an HBCU, which a quick aside, there was this whole debate on um, Twitter the other day. Somebody young was like, why is y'all coming back to homecoming? You graduated 30 years ago, 20 years ago. Homecoming is for kids. When I tell you them old HBCU people been gone 10, 15 years, Heart. Like, never uh, Mel Mitch was saying this on uh tour. She was like, I've never missed homecoming. Her dad before he passed never missed homecoming. 
when you and and one of my friends who went to an HBC was like, when you went to an HBCU and you weren't the minority and you still have friends, you have a reason to celebrate. And it's part of the culture of HBCUs. Right. I have no desire to return to the University of Washington ever. Oh, our uh, UK's like the black alumni in the black students. Like you said, our experience is so funny <clears throat> because, yes, that's why it's called homecoming. You don't literally have to come home. You can't come if home you, if you go there. If you go there, our black our homecoming at UK, there are activities for the black alumni. Now I have missed several just because it is expensive, but literally my chat between me and my sands was popping this whole weekend because UK's homecoming was there. And so we trying to figure out, okay, who, who's there? Who's, um, who's talking about this? Who's talking about that? Who's wearing this? What the Deltas look like at the step show, (laughs) (laughs) you know? So it, it like it might not be to the extent of an HBCU because I do feel like there is a stronger community of wanting to come back. But right. like, heck yeah! If I were in Kentucky, I would have been at at least one homecoming event. Yeah. So I think I think folk who uh, just didn't like their school or didn't have any like real connection with folk or community. I think for me, it's easier because I was a part of sorority. What's also easier is using Honey when I shop. So today's episode is sponsored by Honey. The easy way to save when shopping on your iPhone or computer. I actually love shopping online. I'm over here. I've been looking at this purse that I'm thinking about getting myself because I want to spoil myself a little bit. So you I actually, deserve. I know I deserve, right? Marcus was like, that ain't even splurging. That purse is not that expensive. I was like, it's a splurge to me. But I actually, I do Eat it. Yourself. I shop online multiple times a week. It is a... Re- a recurring thing. I don't get to go to the store that often. So shopping online is important to me. What's also important to me, it don't matter how many shows I'm on. It don't matter how many podcasts I got. I got to save money because I got four kids. Okay. So I'll be looking for promo codes. I'll be wanting the promo code. Bring that price down as low as possible. Okay. So thanks to Honey, manually manually searching for coupon codes is a thing of the past. Honey is the free shopping tool that scours the internet for promo codes and applies the best one it finds to your cart. How it works? Imagine you're shopping on one of your your favorite sites. When you click checkout, the Honey button appears and all you have to do is click coupons. Wait a few seconds as Honey scours the uh, uh, searches for coupons it finds for the site. If Honey finds a working coupon, you'll watch the prices drop. Okay, so understand this. The holidays is coming up, y'all. Okay, gas is still a million dollars. This is not the time to be hard-headed. Do you understand me? Especially if you have children, especially if you have people that you're supposed to be buying stuff for, you can save so much money. I've saved money on clothing. I've saved money on furniture, on home decor. I've saved money on tech. And the fact of the matter is, when, especially if you're making any big purchases and you get a coupon that saves you 20%, that's not money you want to throw away. Like, I, I'm not sure what you're doing in your life, but that's not money that we're going to throw away here in the Tanksley household, okay? So, and it's so easy to use. It's not a it's not a thing that's time consuming. If you're already online shopping, you might as well already be saving with Honey. So, did you know, Honey doesn't just work on desktop. It also works on your iPhone too. So just activate it on Safari on your phone and save on the go. If you don't already have Honey, you could be straight up missing out. And by getting it, you're doing yourself a solid and supporting the show. You know, I, I try not to recommend anything I don't use and I'll be using Honey. Uh, get Honey for free at joinhoney.com slash crew with a K. Crew with a K-E. That's joinhoney.com slash crew with a K. Crew in a game. So this past weekend, I did a movie night with my Patreon, and we watched uh, Vampire in Brooklyn. It was a great time. Eddie Murphy, Angela Bassett, uh, Kadeem Hardison, and John Witherspoon at their Mickey Ficky best. It was hysterical. But I want to tell you about this uh, podcast. It's a uh, pop paranormal it's a horror movie and tv review show hosted by the geek couple karama horn and chuck collins karama horn aka the blurred girl cultural critic parked at the intersection of pop culture and diversity she has a novel set in the black panther universe coming out in the fall of 2022 so it should be out here now actually and her husband chuck collins comic book artist and podcaster in horror cons uh now, see, I can't read these big words. Connoisseur. My brain said, shut up. 
<laughs> and horror connoisseur. <laughs> Each week, they dissect their favorite horror and paranormal classics, deep cuts in current film and TV faves that have left a lasting impact on or are currently changing pop culture. Now, I went to the movies and saw no. OK, I saw because I was like, Jordan Peele, I'm going to support you. And let me tell you what. I don't know what really happened. I had so many <laughs> questions. I was like, what? Why? Wait a minute. Why is the 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 alien called Jean Jacket? And why does it look like beautiful drapery? I would have died if that's what the alien looked like, because I've been like, oh, I want to hang that in my living room. Come here. <laughs> Oh, I would actually love hearing their dissection of it to see if there was parts that I missed because I really felt like there's something that I should have seen that I didn't see. So they, uh, some of the things that they're talking about, some of the horror films they talk about, The Shining, Nope, Halloween, Jacob's Ladder, Stranger Things. So if you are interested in listening to a conversation like that between two black people who really understand culture in horror films, please listen to Pop Paranormal on Paranormal, excuse me, on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. Now, Kevin, I was going to say something about uh, code switching before we move topics. Go ahead. I don't mind so much code switching in the workplace if somebody just feels more comfortable doing that. I know for me, when I have on a little bit more of a professional voice. It keeps me from saying things that just come to my head. Kind of the way that I do on here. The reason why you're like, Angel, why would you say that? Is because you told me to just be me. So with when that happens, things come up in my mouth that, you know, maybe I wouldn't say in most rooms. Yeah. So when I have a certain tone to my voice, it makes me remember, don't cuss. Don't talk about <laughs> Don't talk about genitalia. Don't talk about twerking. Try to keep yourself in a certain way. The only place that code switching irritates me is in church. Oh, did you see Kevin Johnson's video about that? No. Oh, Angel, let me find it for you. Code switching in church makes me so mad. These uh, the People take on a whole different voice. It almost sounds... Sometimes it almost sounds British. It sounds very haughty. And I'm like, when else do people, nobody uses this voice if they're ordering, you know, pizza on the phone. They're not like, I, I, I would like pepper um, and mushroom. You, you found you, it. I found it. You literally, he just talked about this. I have, I and did I, not. As a church kid, I was like, Kevin, how have you, how have you missed this? Let me find it. Let me play it for you, Angel. Okay, hold on one second, because oh, then I want you to do yours. It's coming up, guys. Don't you worry. He's about to pull it up on the screen right now. Oh, him. I yeah. just met him. I'm supposed to see. I love how everybody in church voice change when they get a microphone. <laughs> I see you wearing your good clothes today, Reverend. No, man, they got me on the program doing well. Okay. Praise the Lord, everybody. Oh, clap your hands, all you people, and shout under God with the voice of triumph. Ah, for the Lord most high. Yeah, who? Won't be me. Yeah, y'all got to do the response. Oh, hold on, it's my turn. And I praise the Lord, everybody. I know I'm up here to do a response tonight, but is there anybody here that's got a praise down on the inside? You said y'all want me to do what? Oh, baby, I can't do that. I can't talk on the microphone. Ooh, you know how I like talking on the microphone. Right now? Praise the Lord, everybody. Oh, come here. Y'all can do better than that. But somebody who appreciates God. I didn't come up here to do all this. Let me stay in my life. Nigga, yeah, Golden State is not like that. <laughs> no. Nah, oh, I gotta go do breath. Lift those hands in the air. Come on. Come on. He's the king of kings. Come on. It's like the Holy Spirit gives everybody laryngitis. <laughs> oh, father. It's just like, get a lozenger, lozenge, I mean, and, and clear that slim out. Oh, my gosh. I When I used to preach, I by the grace of God and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, I never had to do this. And working in a church, you get to see, you know, out of town pastors in the little room with the fruit and juice. Ahead of them. <laughs> mm -hmm. And when they first get up to the mic, 
Well, that would, for me, that'd be all right. I, oh, I'll, I'll you can, make a brush. Y'all can do better than that. We serve a God. Oh, my God. Who sits on us high. Get emotion. And looks low. Come on in here. If that was for me, Theo Kiss Franklin, that would be all right. That's the book is Franklin the Third, yeah. the God of Abraham, the God of Galilee. Yeah, come on, Grandma. Why? I'm like, nigga, you got a milk allergy. That is. <laughs> you know what else I hate? Fake stutter. When, 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 when God. Jackson, <laughs> somebody didn't hear me. What, 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 what? You want to pat him on the back? Get it out. Water in any other time in life, and, 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 and when I was reminded of the time, I, 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 I began to open up the floodgates. <laughs> Did you just whistle in? <laughs> Holding that ass, I opened up the floodgates. And 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 I and I let him in. No, 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 watch watch this, watch this. We are gonna go to first Thessalonians. The asthma text. Come on, give me the asthma text. It reads for the Lord our God is honorable. I'm making up viral scriptures because I don't have that many memorized. <laughs> but I feel like that one might sound real. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Using church words outside of church, only in church is a building called an edifice. Mm -hmm. Oh, this is a beautiful edifice. I tried to use the word vestibule. Vestibule was the <laughs> next one. I use it whenever I can now. It's oh. in the uh, go to the vestibule, baby, and get my purse. <laughs> that means downstairs in the front door. Go to the vestibule. We'll be Selling plates right out in the vestibule of foyer. Yes. 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 You know what I think would, would help and they wouldn't do code switching is if they could have the sound effects that a radio show has. Hilarious. Like, you know, I think <laughs> I feel like all of this is like they want the sound effects. They want the bam, bam, bam. God can do it. Bam, 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 bam. One more time. God can do it. Bow, bow. Bow, bow. I feel as though. Hot 97.999. I want them to code switch in that coochie. Keep it real. When you're in that coochie edifice, I I, 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 I am enjoying this. Mm -hmm. Yes. I, 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 mm -hmm. I, I, would, I like this. I hope you're enjoying <laughs> the strokes that the man of God is delivering unto you. I don't. I won't be before you long, amen, because it's warmer than I thought. I ain't going to be up here all night because it's warmer than I thought, but I'm enjoying. <laughs> Get it. Well, mm. Hey, that's <laughs> it. When, 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 when you do the one move, ah! Just let me mantle you. Let yeah. me mantle you and I'll get there. Let me mantle you. <laughs> let me mantle you and I'll get to the promised land. I want to ride that doggy on to Damascus. Give you the land of milk and honey. Huh? Yeah. Oh, I got some milk coming. I ain't going to be no honey, but I got some milk coming now. Going to be thicker than milk. Heavy <laughs> cream. Oh, coming Jesus. your way, woman of God. I remember, <laughs> I remember it, and I'll stop talking about this. I remember there was this one woman at our church. Anytime she was interpreting the tongues, like somebody would start speaking in tongues, and we would wait. We'd be like, okay, you speaking in tongues really loud. What's the interpretation? She would always be like, thus saith the Lord. What? Wait. 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 Why did he thus say it? Why can't we just say, God said, the Holy Spirit, thus thou art. And I was like, I don't think God talks in old English. I'm sorry. I don't think you do. I don't That's think you do. First of all, can you imagine eating some coochie or getting your coochie? Ate? Come on, will you come? Come on, come on. You're right there. Come on. Will you come? Is there one? Is there one? Is there, there one? one? Is there one? Right there. 
We have Interian service on that coochie. Come on, on the tip of your tongue, on the tip of your tongue. On the, it's right there. He's here. He's here. Will you come? Come on. Come on. You ain't got to play with it. You ain't got to play with it tonight. Uh huh. Will you come? You ain't got the bed for it. It's a gift. It's a gift. Let, <laughs> let it lay on. You ain't got to fight it. Relax. Will you come? Come on. Come on. Come on. The altar is yours. Come on, pray, team. If you <laughs> if you will, if you play something softly, metacraciously, softly, metacraciously in the background. Softly, yeah. metacraciously. The doors of the tr church are open. Your legs are open. <laughs> Receive me. Come on. Receive mm -hmm. me into your mouth. Re <laughs> Receive if me into your mouth. No, no, no. For your lips. For your lips. <laughs> the it's really the legs, the legs of the church are now open. <laughs> Listen, she gets a squirting release. Release. I'm out of there. Orgasm. <laughs> you can hold up too long. Orgasm. It's been <laughs> months. Come out of there. G spot <laughs> orgasm. Clitoral orgasm. Come out of there right now. I rebuke you staying up in there. Come out of her. Loose her and let her go. All that leg is shaking. Let her go now, orgasm. This reminds me, did you see that clip of the man who had been playing gospel music? <laughs> Mississippi Mass Choir in the throne room? Like, why? Why? <laughs> why would that be your go-to? Why would that? My thing is, unless it's TD Jakes, we've already been there. Unless it's TD, how does it? That. I don't want that. We're here. I need some Henri music. I don't want nothing that sounds like anything the Lord would find pleasing to his ears. <laughs> I don't want anything like it. We're already here, Angel. It's too late. I like <laughs> We can't hear it, thank God. We can't hear it. No. Thank the Lord is <laughs> I like you ain't gotta say too much from the looking you eyes. I can tell you one of uh, and you ain't gotta come in your boot just as bad as you wanna. I wanna do that's my jam. That's that's what I want to hear. Take it long. Who can find a precious woman? She found her son. She found her love. I remember this. This is exactly what I was about to say, Damien. You talk about my duty with my hair color. His answer was a husband. I knew he was a husband. He grew the pieces of her broken dreams. And now the man loves that her self esteem.
I've never. More, Angel, I got that wasn't even the one I was looking for. Let me get you the one I wanted you to hear. Hold on, and then we can move. We got to move. We got to move. We got to move. Mm. <laughs> Kill you, lady, lady. This one. Mm. Just terrible. I don't like that. I like some t shirt and my panties on. <laughs> she found her love for life. Then the two of them joined together in the love. I have to tell you that I love you. And when I see you going through changes and in pain that bothers me, I feel like I'm a man. I'm supposed to be able to do something. I, I don't want to do. I've tried to do many things, but I know, I know, I know you're still hurting. Yeah, it's kind of hard to explain how I really feel. I really appreciate everything that you've done, the flowers and the trips and everything's been so nice. Yeah. The thing that really, really helps me when my heart is broken is to hear you minister the word of the Lord. I found life in it. And that's when the healing really, really began. Well, if I can do I mean. Why are we talking like this? process you tell me what you need and i'll be there for you i believe that my usher yeah. <laughs> you're my lover i'm what? your lady usher me usher me why are they they're talking so close to the mic i am your lady usher me is that is that how they get, get it on is that hit it from the back <laughs> i am usher me and for tithe and offering. I am dead. I am dead after hearing that. And I'm thankful that I have policy genius to help take care of my family now after my death. We all hope we never need life insurance, but mortgage payments, child care, and other expenses expenses don't disappear when you're gone. Life insurance through your workplace may not be offered or, or it might not offer enough protection for your family needs. And it won't follow you if you leave your job. Since life insurance typically gets more expensive as you age, now's the best time to buy. Policy Genius gives you a smarter way to find and buy the right coverage for you and your family. Me and Marcus both have insurance policies and both of them we got through Policy Genius. I actually used the ad that we had here on Here's the Thing and was like, you know what, let me get me some life insurance. Um, I know that my family will be taken care of in the untimely event of my death and I made sure I had enough got a policy large enough that they have some time to figure out what they want to do with their life. And I wanted to make sure like, Hey, we never know when the day nor the hour is, but I want to make sure that my family is taken care of. And if you have family that you love, don't have them out here in the wind. If you are someone that they depend on for money. <clears throat> um, and policy genius was super easy to use. It's as easy as this ad. I, I swear to you that it was one of the easiest processes we've ever been through regarding insurance. Policy Genius was built to modernize the life insurance industry. The technology makes it easy to compare life insurance quotes from top companies like AIG and Prudential in just a few clicks to find your lowest uh, price. With Policy Genius, you can find life insurance policies that start at just $17 per month for. $500,000 of coverage. And Policy Genius has licensed agents who can help you find options that offer coverage in as little as a week and avoid unnecessarily unnecessary medical examinations. They're not incentivized to recommend one insurer over another so you can trust their guidance. There's no added fees and your personal info is private. No wonder they have thousands of five-star reviews on Google and Trustpilot. Your loved ones deserve a financial safety net. You deserve a smarter way to find and buy it. Head to policygenius.com or click on the link in the description to get your free life insurance quotes and see how you can save. You could save. That's policygenius.com. Come. All right, I did all the ads. I was making sure. I was double checking. I was a little bit confused. Listen, um, I love I love TD. I love Sarita, Sarah, Torre, Thomas Dexter. But funny is funny, and when I tell you at my old church, they was not playing about that CD. They was really listening to that in the throne room. That is not the what I want to hear when I'm giving head. That is not. 
put. If I'm down there working the mic and it sounds like I'm listening to TD talking this close to the mic, my mouth going to dry out. <laughs> sandpaper tongue. It's just not going to. Might as well be giving you head through a, ba a bag of Lay's chips. Just put your thing in there and let me shuffle it around because that's how bad it's going to be. That is how bad. That is just, it's not. It's not hot. And when she started Ooh. talking, they both sound as old as they are. Even though this was years ago, they sound as old as they are currently. They sound like grandparents talking about getting it on. Absolutely not. Nope. No, put put your penis in a granola bag, loose granola, <laughs> because that's as good as it's gonna get. It's not gonna get no, uh, uh, nope. Put your penis in a granola bag. Put your coochie lips on top. I give you a thousand dollars. All right, hard, hard, hard left. No pun intended. <laughs> I thought he was my guy, but everybody has this rule. That if you treat wait staff poorly, you suck as a person. And good friend, James Corden, friend of the pod, has yet to be on, nor does he know who I am. I don't know if he knows about Angel because she booked the Black Lady Sketch Show. She might be on her radar. <laughs> turns on, turns out James Corden is a terrible person to wait staff. So this restaurant tour. Uh, owner of a restaurant called Balthazar. <clears throat> His name is Keith McCall. He wrote this, and I'm going to just read you the manager's report, Angels. And then, of course, as the internet goes, people started doing more. Oh, yeah, he sucks, and I saw it. James mm -hmm. Corden is a huge... This is his Instagram post. James Corden is a hugely gifted comedian, but a tiny cretin of a man. You know you're serious if you call a man a cretin. I don't even really know what a cretin mm -hmm. is. And the most abusive customer to my, to my Balthazar server since the restaurant opened 25 years ago. I don't often 86 a customer. Today, I 86 Corden. It did not make me laugh. Here are two examples of the funny man's treatment of my staff. He behaviored. I think he may behave. Yeah. Uh -huh. he, he, he wrote he behaviored, though. Similarly, in my former restaurant, Cafe Luxembourg, a few years back. Manager's report number one. <clears throat> in June, James Corden was on table 61. After eating his main course, Corden showed the hair to Balthazar. Oh, I'm sorry. Let me read this. Although this is diabolical, it happens very occasionally in all restaurants. After eating his main course, Corden showed the hair to Balthazar manager G, who was very apologetic. Corden was extremely nasty to G and said, get us another round of drinks this second and also take care of all of our drinks so far. This way I write this way. If I write this this way, I write any nasty reviews in Yelp or anything like that. I don't know what he meant, but it seems this like he meant. just is writing. Everybody's writing terribly. He was pissed off, Angel. He didn't have time for no spell correct. Uh, <laughs> James Corden. Manager report number two, James Corden was out Balthazar with his wife on October 9th for brunch. He asked for a table outside. Brunch maitre d' Ali Walters took the table, took the party to table 301. Mr. Corden's wife ordered an egg yolk omelet with Gruyere cheese and salad. A few, few minutes after they received the food, James called their server, MK, and told her there was a little bit of egg <clears throat> white mixed with the egg yolk. MK informed the floor manager, G, the kitchen remade the dish, but unfortunately sent it with home fries instead of a salad. That's when James Corden began yelling like crazy, yelling like crazy to the server. You can't do your job. You can't do your job. Maybe I should go in the kitchen in it and cook the omelet myself. I think me will. That was my That's not what it says. Yes, because he's British. Mm -hmm. uh, Top Boy <laughs> season three on Netflix now, isn't it? This MK was very apologetic and brought G over to the table. He returned the dish, and after that, everything was fine. He gave them promo champagne glasses to smooth everything, smooth things out. G said that Gordon was pleasant to him, but nasty to the server. MK was very shaken, but professional that, uh, but professional that she is. Continued to finish her shift. All right, now let me read this last one from a yes. person who flew with him. And then we'll talk about it. Half an hour into a New York to London flight, which if you don't know is about six and a half hours, passengers in business class notice a woman with a crying baby being brought through the curtains by a flight attendant. They looked on in mild horror as they saw the attendant direct her to an empty seat next to James Corden. Expecting huge celebrity hissy fit to kick off, Corden's cabin mates were impressed to see that he didn't say a word or make any sort of complaint. He simply put on a pair of noise-canceling headphones, pulled an eye mask over his eyes, and turned away from her to sleep. Pretty decent of him, right? When the plane landed, though, passengers were surprised to see Corden remain seated as the woman with the baby struggled to open the overhead locker. 
And even more surprised when she turned to court and said, for F's sake, can you at least hold the baby while I get the badge down? It didn't say for F's sake. It what it what is mine? What, what does yours say? It says for fuck's sake. Oh, okay. Mine's it was something was on my screen. Um. <clears throat> While I get the bags down, the woman was his. The woman was his wife. The baby was his baby. People be terrible. Carpel karaoke. You'll never get another view out of me, unless Jasmine Sullivan's on it, and then I will pause my dislike. Oh, I'll be on Carpel karaoke, and if he has somebody I like on there, I'm gonna watch it. But people be terrible. I will downvote it though. They'll 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 be hearing from me. I was low key. Okay, two thoughts, real quick, and then I want to hear your thoughts. Jackie Ina posted a video. She was clapping back lightly at somebody who was like, "It's been four years. Why haven't you got married?" And she was saying, "It's interesting that my my fiance Dennis never gets these comments. Only I get them, right?" And she said, "You guys don't know my plans. You follow me. You don't know me." And I said, "Oh, oh," and then I thought about that. I like James Corden, but I follow him and I do not know him. I was really surprised that because he has such a jovial personality, I, I assumed that he was a nice guy. But treating servers wrong, that's like, <clears throat> dog. Come on, James Corden. I, you know, if all of these reports and allegations are true. I am not surprised because people be terrible. People really do be terrible. That is just, if that is what I know. That is what I'm certain of. And especially celebrities, we only see, we only see a small, small, like yeah. window into what they allow us to see. We have to wait for somebody to release some video that they, that nobody knew they were recording the video of to see like their actual behavior behind closed doors. <laughs> how they handle people who they consider beneath their status in life. Yeah. And, um, and it's a shame because we the ones that be getting shocked, but it's just like, people be terrible. People be terrible. Listen, man. And James, I listen, apparently he apologized. I missed that. I was looking for it before this because, you know, people be apologizing before we can get to the video. It's, I mean, it's a behavioral it's problem. This doesn't sound like if it, if there are enough instances, it's not a situation problem. It is a behavioral <clears throat> problem. It's so uh, a apology is only to to try to mend that situation, but there's not actually a behavioral change. You know what I'm saying? Right. It's more so I'm aware that now people run their mouth, so I don't want nobody running their mouth about me, but how he feels about how certain people can be treated probably will remain the same. Yeah, and I didn't see any apology. I didn't even see an iOS press release apology unless he did it on his show. Uh, but I didn't see anything. But <clears throat> listen, I don't think you have to let a restaurant like do anything to you, right? If you order something and it's cooked incorrectly or cold or anything like that, I have no problem with you saying, hey, I actually ordered this steak medium well and it's well done. You know, Angel, remember we were in Boston and they they had this steak was like burnt mm -hmm. to a crisp. It was we had ordered medium. I'm not saying you have to just let them do anything to to wow. you, but you can also treat people with decency, right? And a, a salad for a home fry switch ain't ain't doesn't warrant getting yelled at. That literally takes three seconds to fix, a minute. You know, for literally probably five minutes. Mm -hmm. Like, dog, why is you yelling at these people at work? Yeah. Yeah. No, I I really to yell at someone, I don't really know what that would take for me to like get that crunk. I mean, it would have to be something concerning my kids. Yeah. In in, in <sighs> negligence of my children for me to be like, you just about to get your head ripped off, but and I take food seriously. Kevin knows when I get hungry, I'm I'm not pleasant. But I as far as seriously is hilarious, Angel. I do. When I'm hungry, I am not pleasant. I have a shorter tolerance for uh, being incompetent. 
but yelling is never what I'm going to resort to. I no. might get very, um, very like short, like I'm, I'm not going to sugarcoat the things around what I'm saying, but yelling at somebody or demeaning them. What does that, how does that make you feel <laughs> any better? It doesn't change the situation. You just made somebody feel terrible. Yes. I found Angel. I was listening. Just know that. It's on the manager's Instagram. He said, James Corden just called me and apologized profusely, having effed up myself more than most people. I strongly believe in second chances. So if James Corden lets me host his late night, sh late, late show for nine months, I'll immediately rescind his ban from Balthazar. It's funny. No, of course not. But anyone magnanimous enough to apologize to a deadbeat layabout like me and my staff doesn't deserve to be banned so from, from anywhere, especially Balthazar. So come back to the five and dime, Jimmy Corden. Jimmy Corden, all is forgiven. And James Corden, oh, here's his apology. It says, Oi, mate, bruv. Me no, it's not. Me. <laughs> no, it doesn't. No. No. Pop off, I'm, oh, pop off. But pop about to Big Ben. Oi, the queen. Me miss her, I think. No. Somebody said I'm still mad about my tuna salad being dropped in the airport floor. I didn't even yell then. I just stopped and, talking. Oh, let me tell you what's more dangerous and fearful <laughs> than a person yelling is a person yelling internally through their eyes, remaining calm, why fire rages inside of them. And to hear knocked Angel's food down, and I'm not even throwing him under the bus. I <laughs> ate his cake and he knocked Angel's food down. This is what Angel said. <laughs> and we were like, we can, buy, we can buy you more food. And the worst part is it was a red eye, so there was nothing open. And she was like, her nostrils flared. <laughs> she picked it up. She scooped that lettuce off the ground. Mm. She walked outside and put it in there, and I went to sleep. I laid right on the ground. <laughs> I didn't <laughs> I was just like, I'm going to go to bed right here. You know your mom finna whoop you. Let me just go to sleep and see if she... Go to sleep. She might not wake me up and beat me. I was just like, Okay, all right. Okay, yeah. it's just food. It's just food, Angel. You ain't gonna die. You got all these extra layers of fat. Your body can just eat that. <laughs> that was. I was just going through that. I was like, these dudes don't love you. It's fine. They just. They. You know what? You know, you're the only girl here. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's funny because we flew Jet Blue to Hartford. I don't know. Did I tell you all this story on here? I don't recall. What you talking about? Because I don't I, remember flying Jet Blue with you. Have I flown Jet Blue? No, we didn't flow. no, I'm talking about on the tour to Hartford just last week. Or oh, go ago. ahead, go ahead. I hadn't flown Jet Blue in a long time, and I know Jet Blue has something called Mint or that is like supposed to be a nice cabin, but I haven't flown Jet Blue in at least 10, 12, probably 15, 16 years. Early playmakers when we were searching for cheap flights. So I totally forgot that Jet Blue was a low cost carrier. I completely forgot they're a low cost mm -hmm. carrier. <clears throat> so they booked my flight. I got seat two A. So I'm thinking, you know, overnight flight, five hours plus for sure. I'm in first class. I'm going to get dinner. I go up to the counter before our flight just to make sure because I haven't flown Jet Blue in a while. You know, sometimes people don't do it. I said, mm -hmm. uh, "Hey, um, what are they serving for dinner? Are, are they serving dinner on this flight?" And she, the lady, literally looked at me and was like. There ain't no first class on JetBlue. It's you just, really you're, you're just in the front. <laughs> you're just in 2A. We don't have no snacks. So if you want something to eat, you should get it here. And I said, ain't no JetBlue? Ain't no first class? She was like, no. Mind you, this is the same place that just charged me $150 for an overweight bag, $150 for a third bag. Me and Greg together spent well, I guess I paid for it all. $600 in baggage fees because we are so used to flying Delta and we are, uh, when you get up in status, you they let you carry bags up to 70 pounds and JetBlue is a low cost carrier, low cost. So they get a lot of their money from bag fees. And that had just happened. And then I had to eat a cold sandwich from the airport. I don't mind eating airport food. I just want something hot. But at that time of night, it's just like Hudson News food available. Mm -hmm. Whatever, no mayonnaise, roast beef. I was sad. The only reason we flew there is because they had a direct flight from LA to Hartford, which I didn't know exist. 
Um, but you know, I'm back. I told I called the travel uh, person who's booking for us. I said, put us back on Delta because whatever we just saved in flight, I just paid for in baggage fees. That's a whole nother flight. Six hundred dollars in bag fees is a whole entire flight. But anyway, <clears throat> we love you guys. Thanks for tuning in. Sorry this was late. Uh, our friend booked a television program, and we're working with her. And I'm also on tour, so we're working together. Mm -hmm. uh, wise. Patreon, stay tuned. We're going to come up in another 15 minutes and do the bonus episode for this week. Uh, the rest of y'all, we will see you next time. Quick reminder, if you are not on Patreon and you're on the app, as of November 1st, the bonus episodes will only be on Patreon. The main episodes will remain on YouTube in all podcast places, but bonus episodes will remain on Patreon only. Coming to the stage will remain on Patreon only. When we shoot the Black People Don't Do Improv, that will not be on Patreon. That will be live on the app if we do that. We are separating church and state. I know it's not making everybody happy. I get that. I apologize for that. But as of November 1st, the app will be the app. Patreon benefits will be the Patreon benefits. I'm shooting a new show for my Patreon next week. That'll start airing once it's edited. I'm trying to return to my days of when I gave y'all Patreon exclusive content to reward your subscription even more. And Churchy will be out on October 30th on the app. God bless you. God keep you. We will see you at the conference. Bye. Bye. Here's another bang of fire. Here's another one. Here's another bang of fire. Here's another one. Here's another one. Here's another bang of fire. Fire. Here's another bang of fire. With my boy Kev on stage. And that chick angel.